This guy still has the best years ahead of him. And Bernie, you know, he's a big World War II buff. Yeah. We both are. He loves World War II documentaries, any movies that come out about World War II. He's got a lot of mementos, and he loves the, the history behind World War II. And we had a long talk about some of that. Well, he himself, he's making history swimming in this third season for the ISL Swimming Reimagined. His team, the season two champions. But right now in that battle, third and fourth, separated by only a point. At the bottom in the red cap is Tommy Cope. He won this event in his first match of the season. But Martinegi and Kaminga, they're really pushing this first 100. Yeah, Kaminga, you knew that their early speed is going to be a factor in going out. And then he's got some back half guys like Cope. Cope is very good on the back half. Fink is good on the back half. Willa Cone in lane five is good in the back half. And Cordes, who's been, he's right there as well. He has done his job in so many different ways for Cali. They can slide him into any relay they want to as far as the breaststroke goes. Yeah, Cordes is pushing the first step, but here is Tommy Cope on the left side of the screen in the third 50. Kaminga answering on the right side in the white cap. And man, is Cope pushing. You see over there, right now, Kaminga is hanging in there with Cope, and he had to turn, but I think Cope's looking great on the far left. You see him at the bottom. D and they can't C. see each other. Trying to get another win. Kaminga, Nick Fink now trying to move up. Here comes Fink, Fink. trying to steal away the victory, and Fink, Fink does steal it from Cope in the final finish. Down to the wire, Fink gets a win for Cali. Mark talked about it in the pre-show. Arno Kaminga was the number one overall ISL draft pick. Taken first overall by the Aqua Centurions. His best finish in this event is second. Aqua Centurions sitting with only 18 points. Can they make a move here in the men's 200 breaststroke? Oh, they really need to. If they're going to have a chance at all to get into a top two type position, it's almost an impossibility to win this thing for Aqua. But they have the brush strokes. They have the men's events set up pretty well for them. They've got great relays, which certainly will help their cause, but they're gonna have to take care of business where they're supposed to. Swing and struggle in lane number five, Anton McKee right among the leaders. Rothbauer across the pool in lane number one in the mix halfway through for LA. We got five swimmers with a chance to win this 200 breaststroke here. They're very tight. The jackpot time is an even five seconds. But you've got right there, you can see from overhead, it's probably narrowed down to three swimmers at this point, but still very, very tight with 75 meters left to go. And coming into the 150 mark. Anton McKee, that's good news. Who told you that he could be a critical leader for Toronto if he can find his form from a season ago. But right next to him, the number one draft pick for the Aqua Centurions, Kaminga. He is trying to surge as well. Aqua trying to get their first playoff win. And Kaminga's going to have the lead headed into the final 25. Yeah, Kaminga was 31 3, out split McKee on that third 50. McKee's not going to give it to him, though. Oh, Kaminga comes home and he surges to get the win. Aqua with a big jackpot win in the 200 breaststroke. Right, and most likely yeah. will be in the finals this year. Yes, yeah, certainly Toronto sitting back watching. They're currently second in the table. They would love to see Iron and London finish ahead of the LA current again. The current, it was huge that LA won a week ago in that first playoff match. That was a huge victory for them.
there there is that possibility. Don't count Toronto out. They, they're there is that possibility, especially if LA can get second here, and then all of a sudden, you said it at the top of the broadcast, that means Toronto yep. starts to chase London, perhaps, yep. for that four spot. Toronto is in a good position in their next match because they have Aqua and Iron, and of course, Cali to go against, but they have at least a good shot to get second in that next match. Look at Lily King. Does what she normally does, takes it out. Nobody has the speed that Lily King has going out in the 200 breaststroke. Nobody in the world has her speed going out that first 100. Short course, long course, long course, you name it. She has the speed to get out. 105 flat on the way out. Wow. Her ISL record is 215.5. She went 216 plus back in match number six. She always comes back to the field on the third 50. This is part of her strategy. Let's look at her splits. 30.3 Bernie, 34.7. She's 35.7 on that split. Escobedo beat her, laser beat her on that split. Both of those swimmers out split her on that third 50. And then she starts getting aggressive again. Annie Laser moved into second. There she is just to the right of King, who's got the lead with 25 meters to go. Yeah, she just is sailing along right now. And, and now you start to look at the red. The jackpots will start to come up, as they usually do for her. And Lily King champion again in the 200 breaststroke. Oh, Laser finishes second and Pickram fourth. Watanabe is in there. I mean, there are some solid breaststrokers in this field. And the rating is about 16,000. Now, you're asking me, everybody's asking me, well, what yep. are you talking about, aggregate rating? You can help me out here, buddy. But basically, it's the sum of all the ratings of each athlete in that event. Yeah. Correct? That's Now you're saying, well, how does an athlete get rated? Well, basically, a, it's how good you are. Yep. I mean, that's in simple terms, it's how successful you've been in this event. I'll give an example. Molly Renshaw, right there in lane number two from New York. She's got the highest rating in this event, 4,200. That means she's had tremendous success in the 200 breaststroke. You're right above her is Falco, who only has a 142 rating, meaning she's not been very good in the 200. Right. You flip that over there in the 50, when we get to the 50, it's just the opposite. Falco has a a rating about Much what higher. Renshaw is, yep. and Renshaw's down there where Hoko is. So it's really depending on how successful you've been in each event. And it's a little bit how we're able to project, at least on our end, mathematically, again, our our mathematicians with their abacuses give us the numbers, not us, but right. that Renshaw and Wood combined could potentially score 15 points. That's what they're projected to try to score in this event. Aqua projected to score 10 points. And so again, when we tell you about the six points difference coming in between the top three teams after day one, it is based on the ratings, the projections. And of course, you get some upsets every now and again. Perfectly put, partner. Nice job. And I, and I think that squares it away. If you don't understand that, then neither do but I. At, but at the end of the day, the, the biggest thing is 10,000 to 20,000 is a not a very strong event. Right. 20 to 30 is a, a good, pretty decent, solid. good event. B. 30 and, and above, really good. And when we get to the grand final, I'm sure we'll see We're some with 40. a 40,000. We've seen a couple of 40s here so far, and that just tells you the field is exceptional. And talk about exceptional. How about there in the middle of the pool, taking over first, this Strouch from Iron. And New York doing a good job, Bernie, over there. First and second, second, third. They're going to finish top three. Renshaw in lane two, Wood in lane number one. But Iron on the verge of trying to get another one. But oh, it's so tight down the engine. It is Renshaw who touches first. You know, I, I think being so good in long course swimming, especially long course 100, it sets up her 200 short course so well. So great on the turns, greatest collegiate breaststroker in history. She won the 100 and 200 all four years while she was in college at Indiana. So you know she's got great turns, great walls. 
Victoria Gunas, a good shout out to her. Right above her in lane number three from Energy Standard. Just won the European Championship in the 400 IM. First swimmer from Turkey in history to ever win a gold medal at European Championships. Boy, King is, you know, she's so lightning quick, Bernie, going out. I mean, she uses that early speed so well to get out there, and it, it, it makes everybody else start to rush things. They right. feel like they've got to rush to get back into it. And then she settles in on this third 50, and then she blows it out on the fourth 50. I don't know what she does, but this third 50, she kind of lets everybody creep back into it. Yep. And then she'll blow it out on the on the fourth one. But right now, she's got a little bit of a race over there. Yeah, Temenkova up in lane number two, actually, for DC Train. May have the lead here at the turn with 75 meters to go. And, and you know, this is another really important race for Timakova and especially DC really having her struggles right now. She only comes in as the fifth rated. She's two seconds behind King coming into this. That's where she came back on King. Now let's see if King can do what she's done in the past and have a great last 50. Believe me, she knows she's over there. Temenkova had a half second lead over King, but here yeah. comes Lily King yeah. on the final 50 <laughs> and they'll turn even. Even and watch the last turn. I mean, Keen, it's almost like she said, I'm going to let you get a little confidence this third 50. I'll take care of business here. It's all mine, the fourth 50. For the 14th time in her ISL career, King gets the win at 217.43. Temenkova second at 218.60.